What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, click this little subscribe button up here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now it's a beautiful Thursday morning here on the lake and it is cold. We are in pretty much all of winter now and we are in dry suit weather. And what I mean by that is, is anytime that we're in open water, we are pretty much wearing dry suits. Yeah, we got thicker wetsuits and stuff, but you know, if you're a true diver and you get out there and dive in the wintertime, you're gonna need a dry suit. And I've actually got several dry suits here with me. These are all my different dry suits. I've got four personal suits, and then I've got a couple of shop suits as well that we use as teaching aids when we're doing classes and things like that. But I actually had a catastrophic failure with one of my dry suits the other day, and I wanna talk a little bit about what actually happened, and I'm gonna talk about how to fix that problem so that it saves you money and not having to send your dry suit off to get it repaired. I'm also gonna go over a couple little tips and tricks that I personally do to make sure that my suits get dried out in the event that I have a catastrophic failure. And basically what a catastrophic failure is, that's when your suit floods, whether it comes through the zipper, a seal, you break a seal or something like that. And that's a catastrophic failure in a suit. And if it gets wet, then obviously it's not a dry suit. So we're gonna look at some of the things that can happen. I'm gonna show you exactly what happened to me on a dive the other day, and I'm gonna show you how I fixed the problem. But I'm also gonna be giving you some tips and tricks on some things that you can do to prolong the life of your suit and make dry suit diving a little bit more comfortable. So guys, I've showed you most of my suits in, in the past before in videos, and I'm gonna briefly go through what each one is, and I'm gonna talk about the differences in them. I've even got a shop suit here. This is a white suit here, um, and we'll talk a little bit about it too, because I'm gonna show you some failures that's happened with it. But this is an old OS Systems TELUS model. Uh, this one has actually become delaminated, and basically what that means, this is a tri-laminate um, dry suit, meaning there's three pieces of material that's basically glued together, seamed together, and it's come apart just like that. So this suit is actually taken out of service, but I'll talk a little bit towards the end of the video why I still have it. This is my neoprene dry suit. This is a crushed neoprene. This is the Comfort Zone Scuba. This is their base model. Absolutely love the suit. It's very comfortable. This is another OS Systems dry suit. One thing that sets this guy apart, this is a bi-laminate suit. That means there's two pieces of material glued together versus three pieces of material. It's a little bit more durable than the tri-laminate, and this is typically the suit I wear a lot of times if I'm in some type of ha hazmatic environment. Uh, this is also a front entry horizontal zip. And if you've never seen one of those, I'll show you a quick video of what that means. Basically, it just goes across the chest when you're zipping it up, and then the material itself wraps around itself and clips to the front. So it's a little bit different entry method than what a, a most front entry dry suits are, but it is a very comfortable suit, and um, it works great for salvage work and stuff like that. And then this is my new Scuba Force. I've had this suit for a few months now. Absolutely love this suit. It actually replaced my old TELUS model. It's just a... Uh, diagonal front entry like most front entry dry suits are and then like i said this is one of the shop suits this is a watts dry suit it also is a front entry um, and of course the uh, neck seals have been ripped out of it they broke a long time ago and so basically we use this suit now just as a training aid but let's talk about what actually happened the other day and i'll talk about how i fixed the problem or how i diagnosed the problem and then we'll kind of go from there and I'll give you some pointers too towards the end of the video on what you can do to make your suits last a lot longer uh, as far as the investment you put into them originally and some things that you can do to make your dry suit diving a little bit more comfortable. All right guys, so let's go ahead and jump into the failure itself and we're gonna be using the comfort zone uh, dry suit here. Once again, I love this suit. It's very, very comfortable. It's very flexible. It's extremely warm. I barely have to wear any undergarments even in the coldest environments with this suit. Um, and to be honest, because it's a, a crushed neoprene, I don't even have to wear a lot of weight with this guy because it's basically seven mils. It's been pre-crushed down to three mils. So I really, really enjoy this suit. However, I do have a leak and this is where the catastrophic failure comes in. The wetness that I'm getting is around the chest area. 
And there's several things that can be causing that. Well, I'm going to kind of show you uh, several things that can be causing it, but I'm also going to talk about ex explicitly in this one what caused it and then how I fixed the problem. So to do that, we need to get this valve off. And just for simplicity's sake, I've already got a valve off a dry suit here, and I want to kind of show you how it works. It's actually two pieces. So where my thumb is is the back part. That's what goes on the inside of the suit. And then the front part here, this is where your inflator button is. That's what goes on the top of the suit. Now, if you were just just stick it into the suit and screw it together, you're not going to have a waterproof seal. There's several things in there. We've got a little uh, spacer in here that kind of helps seal it as well. But primarily, we have a rubber grommet. And if I show you on this suit, you'll see there is a rubber grommet. And that rubber grommet is basically just stuck through the suit and then glued down. And you can kind of see the top part there. You can see where it's kind of grooved out. And then if I show you on the inside as well, you'll see that it's just that same rubber grommet on the inside. And that's where your spacer and the back part of the inflator goes. Well, on my suit, I'm actually getting wet all the way around this. So in general, you would think maybe the rubber grommet needs to be replaced or like in the case of this particular suit, you'll see where I've had to glue it back in the past because it did get a little bit of leakage. Well, I've done that and I've done that several times and I've probably made an additional 20 dives on this suit and I'm still getting wet after gluing. So my next thought, of course, is it's the valve. And when I took this valve out originally, I did find a crack in the valve itself. So I've replaced the valve with this new SciTech here, and it's the same valve that came in it, but I replaced it and I've not had any leaks since then. So the cool thing about that is it was a very simple fix. I didn't have to send this suit off to get it repaired. There's a lot of shops like ours that sell dry suits and teach dry suit courses, but we don't do many dry suit repairs. So a lot of times if our customers come in and they have major failures in their suit or they wanna get something swapped out, um, we send it off for them. We don't actually do the repairs here for them. But something as simple as this, if you're getting wet around your chest, there's a few things that it could be. One, obviously, in my case, it was a valve. Uh, number two, it could be that grommets wore out or it's not glued down properly, or it could be the material itself. Now, like in, in the case of this particular suit, I talked about it being delaminated. That's where those materials have come apart. And when it gets to that point, then obviously changing out an inflator or gluing down a, a grommet is not going to solve the problem. But when it, once it becomes delaminated, then you've got issues there. In a neoprene suit, though, once again, it could just be something as simple as you got a little hole in the neoprene. And that's a very simple fix with a little bit of Aquasil or a little bit of wetsuit glue or something like that. But yeah, that's all it was. Now, obviously, this was not the actual inflator. This one went with that whites right there. But on this particular suit here, I had a SciTech valve just like this one, and it was bad. It had a crack in the housing itself, and it was allowing water to come through and not just come through when I hit the inflator. It was coming through just simply by standing in chest deep water. So I was able to get that fixed very easily. Um, let's move on now to some of the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years that's really going to help me out. And we'll kind of go back to this suit primarily because I did have a catastrophic failure. It did fill up with water. And in a situation like that, you want to dry out your suit. You don't want to leave your suit. I'm, I'm the world's worst, guys, to leave my gear in the back of my truck. Here's some of my side mount gear. We were actually diving into local quarry the other day. And it's been about three days since I've used it. And it's still wet. It's still in my Pelican box. It's still in the back of the truck. I've just not pulled it out yet. And to be honest with you, I didn't pull out my dry suit neither. It was actually in that blue dry bag right there it was wet and it's still wet so you want to make sure you take good care of your gear well let's talk a little bit about drying out the inside of a dry suit it's very simple to just flip the suit inside out hang it up let it drip dry let gravity work and then in the case of neoprene you would flip it right side out again hang it up let the outside dry and it's a pretty simple process however if you've got dry suits like me all my dry suits every single one of them have built-in boots. They don't have socks. They don't have latex socks. or near. They're built-in boots. That means the boots are attached to it. Why? A lot of people say, why wouldn't you do separate boots? Because I'm lazy. When I put on a suit, I want to be done putting it on. I don't want to have to bend over to put boots on. And I really enjoy the polar boots that come on most dry suits nowadays. They're very comfortable, very warm. So that's why I do it. But here's the problem with that. These boots, if they get wet on the inside rarely dry out unless you put some type of dryer system that you can hang your suit up and let it dry and you're blowing air into it those boots rarely rarely dry out so what do we do well 
one thing is you can use these silica packets. Now, very recently, me and my wife just purchased new furniture for our house, and the boxes that the furniture came in came with a bunch of these. And I kind of got that idea from a, a friend of mine who said, well, just throw some type of absorbent pouch up in there, and it will dry your boots out. And the cool thing is, I've actually been doing that for years. I've just never really used the silica pouches to do that. What I've actually been using is a sham wow and i've showed you this guys in the past in several of our other dry suit videos i actually do this in the bags as well i can put it in there to soak up moisture i do it in my regulator bags as well which is another cool trick that we did in a, a scuba um video uh several years ago we showed you how to do it but i do that with my dry suits too so all i've got to do is just stick this in the dry suit shove it down into the foot pocket or into the boot of the dry suit and it dries it out very quickly i'm actually going to try these silica packets out and see how they work and then of course i'll report back to you and let you know what i thought but these were free they didn't cost me nothing i bought the furniture that came with it but you can get them pretty cheap uh the chamois cloths you can definitely get them really dirt cheap so that's a cool little trick that you can do. Let's go back to this suit real quick because I wanna talk about why I've not thrown it away. This suit is not usable. You can't even get knee deep water without it filling up on you. Um, why do I keep it around if it's no good? Well, for one, I own a dive shop. I'm a dry suit instructor. I teach people about dry suits. So it's a great teaching aid for me. It's kind of like that white suit there. That white suit, like we said earlier, the seals are just kind of ripped out of it. They're no good. The, the material's about shot. If I'm not mistaken, I even believe the zipper's gone in this one too. So they make great teaching aids for us. We don't have to go out and buy very expensive dry suits or even cheap dry suits just to teach a class. We have teaching aids and we can use it, say, in the equipment techniques course as well to talk about how to take care of things. So that's the first reason I have it. The second reason I have it is because this seal's still good. Um, the seal and the wrist are still good. A lot of these suits still have good parts that we can swap out. In the case of this, i.e. the inflator valve, I can very easily swap this out for any of these suits as long as the grommet size is the same. So don't necessarily throw stuff away when it goes bad. If you do wanna throw it away, that's fine, but salvage what you can. This silicone neck seal here is still in perfect shape. Okay, this one's probably been on the suit, got used probably 40 or 50 times before the suit went down, and it's still in very well, good shape. Same thing here. Now, this suit gets a little bit of use, but this suit gets a lot of use as far as hazmatic environments, and the seal is still good. So if this suit ever goes down, I might throw the suit away, but I'm going to take the valve out. I'm going to take the wrist and the neck seals, if they're still good, and I'm going to take them out because I can use them. All of my suits, with the exception of the neoprene one, have the quick change seal. So I can pop the next seal out. I can put it in this suit. I can pop it out of this suit. I can put it in my scuba force suit. So they're great systems that you don't necessarily have to trash every single bit of it. But guys, that's it for dry suit repair or for this video, if you will. I want to talk a little bit about the catastrophic failure I had here and how I fixed it because that's something you can do. We all want to save money here, but we do want good quality work. Well, you can do most of the work without having to send your suit off. It's a very simple fix. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. Let me know down in the comment section below what type of dry suit do you prefer? Do you prefer a bilaminate, a trilaminate, a neoprene, or that really, really bad vulcanized rubber that nobody likes. Let me know down below what's your favorite dry suit, what you like, and let me know a dry suit story. Have you ever had a catastrophic failure, and how did you fix it as well? Because I really hope you liked today's video. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.